YouTube, what the crap's going on? Air of Schemes here, and yes, I'll be representing a replay today that has none other than Mr. Skarsnik, and he is doing some snotling scheming, folks. Now, that's not where you're trying to pick your nose in the middle of the class and not have anybody see it. We're rubbing it on the bottom of the desk right now. That is one version of snotling scheming, but this is a different version of it. It's the version where Skarsnik brings the shroom, and then he brings the snotling wagon flappas. The snotling wagon flappas actually have a snotling on the front who chucks these uh, cool little mushrooms at the enemy, and it's actually pretty much the same thing. Might as well grab a shot of that. That'll be the, uh, the thumbnail, right? Um, in any case, yeah, they, um, they throw the mushrooms a lot like the witch elves throw the knives that we saw in the cauldrons a couple of, video a couple of videos ago. If you haven't seen that video, make sure and go check it out. It's the, uh, our cauldrons broken. Um, and cauldrons obviously are very strong. They do have weaknesses though, and I feel like I should point that out. Now this is a 3v3 battle where Wicked wanted to demonstrate some of the power of the Snotling Wagons. Let me, um, I'll pause it real quick and just cover the armies just so you all know what's going head to head. We got Vampires, Skaven, and Greenskin. Skarsnik was the Greenskin Lord that you saw here. We've got a Blood Dragon Vampire Lord, and then for the Skaven, I'm gonna forget, uh, we have, uh, Throt, the Unclean. And of course, Throt is very mobile and um, pretty pretty nice threat against a lot of different units. He does pretty good armor-piercing damage. He's a little bit squishy uh, to missile attacks. He's got Gorich for some help here, which does, some, again, nice AP damage, even better when it's against infantry, but pretty good. Uh, we're going to have some Globadiers here uh, in order to cause some good damage to expensive infantry, and then just some Skaven Chaff. You've got some Light Cavalry Squigs mixed in here for the green skin. We do have an Orc Shaman here uh, who's going to be rocking the big wall. It looks like Gaze of Mork. Then we have a Knight Gobbo Shaman here, which looks like it's just there as a battery to charge up winds. No, it's also got the Bad Moon. Um, and then we got Skarsnik there again with the uh, Fermented Fungi, which is going to kind of rampage and debuff an enemy unit. There's a couple of Blorks supporting in there as well, Black Orcs. And then the Vampires have brought some Crypt Horrors. They have a Corpse Cart with the Unholy Lodestone to help do some healing. Um, there's the Chillgeist here, and they're going to be mixed in with some Blood Knights. And a dire pack and a blood dragon lord and then also the devils of Swartzhofen. so some pretty significant ap damage here on the part of the vampires alethanar is leading up his own faction here of nagarith um you can see him out in front so he's gonna be trying to snipe from a distance he's got a couple of shadow walkers with him which are always a cool pick those are the poison ranged and melee attack archers that are a nice hybrid unit they're low on armor but if they get into a fight late they can be pretty devastating we got the Fireborn, which is our anti-large dragon princes, uh, some Lion Chariots of Trace, which are nice armor-piercing anti-infantry tools, some Spearmen and Rangers, along with a Mage of Light rocking a net of Amontok. We'll go take a look over here. Scarbrand is here with the Legion of Corn. He's brought some Skull Crushers that are leveled up because you always have leftover money with corn if you don't pick, you know, really, really well. We got some Spawn, and then we've got some Warriors of Corn and Bloodletters. Scarbrand himself, and he is supported by a Grinder. A cultist of corn doing some summons. Scarbrand, of course, a very, very powerful entity on the battlefield, uh, but also a very big investment. Uh, we're going to have the Tomb Kings here with a lot of spearmen. There are some Nehakara warriors, Scorpion Legion on the other side, some Sepulchral Stalkers, Shabti Great Bow. Then we've got Katep and a casket. So it's the dreaded double casket, or I guess it could be worse, could be triple or even quadruple casket. Um, and then we've got skeletons. Uh, on chariots and then horsemen, so a little mobility component here for the Tomb Kings. Uh, the Tomb Kings are going to open it up with the caskets, of course, and they are making the right target, targeting Skaven Globadiers and forcing the enemy forward. But I don't think that it was ever the intention of these troops to sit still. Uh, between the Skaven and the Greenskins, they could have brought a fairly significant artillery component, um, but they obviously decided to focus on melee. And with Elitha Nars faction choosing to go um, as the kind of range support faction, although he does have a fair bit of melee element, if he decides to kite, uh, it's possible that you can get ignored when you're kiting, and then all the melee, and that's honestly actually kind of look like what's about to happen here. You can see that, I call them the home team here, I don't have my telestration tools on, they are pushing over here and just kind of ignoring Elitha Nar. That's honestly probably a good choice. I don't know how much damage he can cause in the current state of things. Um, if they just focus elsewhere. So let's go take a look at what's going to happen. You can see here the uh, the home team approaching the position of the Tomb Kings and a corn. A corn is charging forward, as one might expect corn to. Um, and let's see what happens with Scarbrand. I mean, Scarbrand alone would absolutely level Throt, so I don't think that's a fight that Throt wants to be in. It's 
a missile attack to start things. Brot's gonna fall back. Globadier's opening up on the Chaos Warriors Corn, causing really nice damage. Plus, there's Kalorks in there. You see the vampire, uh, the Blood Dragon Lord slinging around. Ooh, the Chillgeister swing. Okay, I think I see what's happening here. Yeah, here comes the Schwarzhofen crew here, the Devils. And then we got Skarsnik and the Flappas. Uh, this is a trap, folks. <laughs> so, Admiral Akbar, sound off. Yeah, so the Chillgeister gonna trap uh, Scarbrand in place. He's now gonna be extremely slow, especially when they hit him with the Frostbite attack. It's gonna really drop his speed. They actually just went cruising past him there. Scarbrand does have magic attack, so they just kind of slowed him down for a moment. That was a really nice job. He is now absolutely trapped here. He's getting pummeled with the Helm of Discord and Poison, and he's probably about to eat the Fermented Fungi as well, because here comes Skarsnik. The Flappas, remember, these guys throw their mushrooms when they're melee, and they cause a lot of damage. Yeah, see these uh, Skull Crusher units just falling down while they're engaged with the Flappas. And uh, Scarbrand may be tough, but, I mean, this is an insane fight to find yourself in the middle of, and Scarbrand is getting absolutely dumpstered by Skarsnik's scheming crew here in the Snotlings. So it's a good demonstration of the power of Snotlings here. Now, this is a, um, this is a team battle, and so, obviously, this was a very nice combination, and with Scarbrand down, it is going to be a huge effort for the other team to try and overcome the loss of value there just because Skarsnik is so expensive. Look at this though. Shadow Walker's getting attacked by clan rats. <laughs> they are like, no sir, you filthy rats. Get off. They aren't having that. Yeah, those rats are gonna lose that every time. So that makes that kind of a cool unit. Uh, in any case, uh, let's take a look at the rest of the battlefield. We've got some summons still coming in here from the cultists. That's gonna be a blood letter. The caskets are still firing away, going after Skaven Globadiers, uh, hitting some of their own here, though. It's like the squigs rolling down this flank, the devils over here as well. It's like maybe trying to take out some of the Tomb King mobility, and it looks like the zombie dragon wants a piece of Katep. There's not going to be much that Katep can do about it. The Chillgeist already got back, and it looks like they cleaned up the Ashapti. Yep, that is exactly what they did. And I see the Sepulchral Stalkers. Um, back to just being Sepulchral, no more stalking. Um, so they are down. So the vampires are shredding through the Tomb Kings with the help of their allies. Right now, Gorich is over here, looks like, in a big fight with Blood Letters. He doesn't have any kills yet, which is kind of surprising. He may be chasing those chariots, actually. That would make more sense. Looks like Skarsnik and them have now teamed up on the Soul Grinder, which does actually seem to be lasting longer. Wonder, yeah, they're still throwing shrooms. See that when they throw the shrooms? So if they connect on those hits, it's going to be extra attacks, and they are pretty well melting that Soul Grinder, and the Soul Grinder, I mean, it's pretty strong. You'd think it would be getting a lot more damage done against these Flappas, and it is doing some. And some people might be saying, well, Air, are these units overpowered? I, I don't think so. Like, I mean, they certainly have weaknesses. Um, the Flappas and the Cauldrons, like, if they get shot much, they're going to go down real quick. Um, the Flappas only have 50 armor, so it's not going to take much. I don't know about the Cauldron, I don't remember the armor on it, but I would think Missiles is going to be your main worry with those units, um, as they would get picked apart pretty quickly um, by Missiles, especially if you had like a net or something else to control that, or just some kind of slowing effect um, to slow those units down. But I mean, they're going to take down, they're going to have helped take down Scarbrand and a Soul Grinder. That is some pretty sick value. Check it out over here. We've got Throck coming in as unclean as ever with Gorich, trying to get rid of these lion chariots. Yeah, the other team is totally beaten here. When Scarbrand got dumpstered on like that, it was pretty much over. And I'm not saying that to be mean to the players controlling Scarbrand. Sometimes you just don't see those traps coming in the battle. I kind of saw it starting to form there, but you can be busy elsewhere. You can be talking to your teammate. You can miss it. Um, and then if you miss it, then all of a sudden you find you're there. And that's the thing about team battles is they can be crazy. Because in a 1v1, you at least, um, I mean, it is possible sometimes to lose a character, you know, pretty badly like that. But it's a little harder because you know, there's only so much resources that one player has. And there was clear tag teaming going on here. Teamwork, right? Which is the purpose of a team battle. So that teamwork ended up um, really killing Skarsnik. Um, or, sorry, Scarbrand. Very different characters there, Skarsnik and Scarbrand. Um, but yeah, killing uh, Scarbrand a lot quicker and I'm sure the Prince of Corn really wanted. Look at these squigs here, getting some nice armor-piercing value up against the Fireborn. 
That's a great place for them to be. And here comes some wolves and squigs pinning in a real expensive unit. And then the flappas come in. And let's watch how quickly they're able to finish off Fireborn. Very quickly was the answer. Got absolutely melted there. And I believe Alethanar is really only one of the units left. And Throt is out here harassing him. He split. So his dual personality is coming here. That's the real one right there. And then this is the, um, this is the decoy. Uh, because you can see the weapon damage is at zero. I don't think it shows you that in the battle, though. I could be wrong. Like, if you go over his card, I don't think it shows you which one's which. Uh, but anyway, he split up. It did work for a second. Gorich is around, and Gorich would be a nightmare for someone like Alethanar. But Alethanar and his Shadow Walkers are really the only things left. But, yeah, look at these Shadow Walkers. Watch what they do to Throt. That's what I was talking about. Units that don't have a lot of armor. See, the Flappas are a lot like this. Um, units like the Shadow Walkers slow them down. Chameleon Skinks will slow them down. A lot of units would be very deadly to the Flappas um, if they can hold them back and help control them uh, and thus be able to control the damage. Uh, Gorch is going to get netted by the Light Mage here, but I mean, it's only a matter of time, folks, before this one is over. The uh, the home team, the submitting team here, really got on a roll because of that um, early teamwork there. But really, more so, this replay wasn't about trying to necessarily show you like an extremely tight, extremely close 3v3. This is more meant to show you uh, because someone had brought up the Flappas in the comment section and then Wicked had saw it and he decided to go test it because he really likes the Flappa units. And um, I can see why. I mean, they're a fun unit. They're very thematic for the green skins, like all, you know, goofy and wonky and put together from scrap and, you know, just doing your typical green skin thing here. Uh, and some people might be saying, well, hey, are you saying they're overtuned like the Cauldrons? I mean, the Cauldrons might be overtuned, but again, you have to bring two of them. There's risk associated with that, so maybe it needs to be adjusted some. I think it's worth looking at. The Flappas, someone might ask the same thing. But I, I would think these units have weaknesses. Basically, we just wanted to show you what they can do. They are similar. They're very similar, in fact, um, to what you saw with the Cauldrons. Different types of units, right, though, because it's four entities versus one. So on, right? So there is some differences there. But still, a unit that ended up getting some pretty solid value. Let's go look at them right here. We had 895, 1607, 1464, and 1466. That is a lot of value out of these Flappas. Skarsnik barely got any. I would say that Black Orcs probably picked up a little. Yeah, that unit did. Um, some of those kills are a little less value. I'm guessing one of these squigs that hit the Fireborn probably did pretty well. Yeah, a couple of them there doing. I mean, 500-something value on a squig is insane. That's really good. Um, let's go take a look at Throt's army, see how he was doing. Him and Gorich were doing well. Um, let's see, Death Globe, yeah, the Bombardier's got a few kills, but not a ton of value because they were getting crapped on by the, the caskets, and that's tough. I think it's tough when you start getting hit by the caskets. Let's take a look at, uh, we already looked at Scars, now let's look at the Blood Dragon Lord. He, oh, wow, yeah, that's a really nice performance from the Blood Dragon Lord there at 3706. Um, decent performance out of the, the Blood Knights there for sure. And the Chill guys were on a roll. The Devils were doing good. The devil gone down to Georgia looking for a soul to steal. <laughs> and uh, they found Scarbrand's soul. <laughs> Wait, he is the Devil, basically. Huh? What? Maybe they were they were going down looking for the Devil's soul to steal. Because that's essentially what they pulled off here. Poor Scarbrand. I mean, rest in pieces, you sweet demon prince. Um, Grand Hierophant Katep getting some work done against those Skaven Globadiers. Um, but he couldn't hold a line long enough, ended up getting overwhelmed, and then Alethanar attempting that beautiful elfy skirmish, but it was a little bit too slow developing. I mean, you can see the, I mean, the statistics there. I mean, Shadow Walker was picking up some money. He was getting some money. But it takes time for those things to develop, and your whole team has to be ready to deal with that. Otherwise, you end up getting, you know, knocked out like that. But anyway, fun gameplay. Interesting. I appreciate Wicked sending it through so we could take a look at the Flappas. Um, so Snotling Wagons are going to be the Snotling Wagon Flappas in particular, and I believe it's because they throw the mushrooms. Um, so you got to keep an eye on those units. I mean, they're obviously a little better than they were in Warhammer 2. I think they got nerfed too much in Warhammer 2. No Wicked was feeling the same way. Um, you all can tell me what you think down in the chat, though, but I mean, that's a pretty darn solid performance out of those units. Um, pretty interesting to see. But like I said, be curious to see your thoughts. Air of Carthage, signing out for now. I'll see you again soon.